位念者，大家好，我们皮博士今天来到了戴尔福特的，就荷兰戴尔福特的一个特别出名的酒店，叫 Blink， 七百种啤酒，然后大家可以看到这个其实店面也不是很大，然后今天我们非常有幸请到了 Blink 的老板 Jasper， 呃，然后我们做一个采访，然后之前呢已经收集过大家的问题，所以咱们将会根据这些问题列表，然后逐一一提问。So, Jasper, thank you for the interview. I think maybe you can More give us uh, some general information about the uh, Blink Beer Store and mm -hmm. uh, yourself. Of course. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm Jasper, uh, 39, married. I have three kids, and together with my wife, uh, we also run a beer pub. And that is basically where the idea for the beer shop originated, because mm -hmm. people were asking us, uh, where can we buy this beer? Because yeah. in a pub, you're not allowed to take it home. You drink it there, and in the shop you take it home, and you're not allowed to drink it in the shop. And we were telling so many people where to go that we thought, why not start a shop ourselves? Okay. That idea was born. We found a place that's here, and we wanted something that's small, not much light, because UV is bad for beer, uh, and it keeps it cool. And the cooler the beer is, the longer you can preserve it. And then if it's slow for uh, a bit, then that's okay as well. So, uh, when did you start? Uh, uh, the 4th of October 2012. So, in October, it's almost three years. Mm -hmm. And basically, day one, it's been a success. People like it and people yeah. discover stuff. But still, every day now, people come in and oh, are you here? It's nice. <laughs> I'm glad I discovered you. But people are discovering beer, more and more people. So and when you are here, you can also sell more beer. Uh, yeah, so you got yeah. a professional to suggest a really good beer. Uh, well, that's the idea. That's if you want a shop, you need to know something about the beer yeah. and the styles and the breweries. That's your main purpose. Yeah. yeah, basically to provide people with different beers, okay. and obviously we like beers as well. So you know we like drinking different beers, and this is great to have your own shop and pick some bottles, uh, and also uh, to discover new things. So is this, uh, is this a full-time career at this moment? Uh, well, we have this shop, uh, we have the pub, uh, and uh, last year I was also busy with beer ice cream for a small company called Hot Frost. Uh, so it's a lot of things related to beer. And the 28th of June this year, we have a beer festival at Dora, yeah, organizing yeah. that. So yeah, together with everything that we do, it's full-time. But I'm not working full-time in the shop. Okay, so it's more management in the background, organizing, uh, and uh, also working behind the bar in Dora. Okay. So at this moment, uh, uh, how many brands of the beer do you have? I didn't count them today, and if something runs out, obviously it drops. Uh, but on average, between 700 and 800 different beers. Not necessarily different on the brands, but different beers. Same brewery with different styles. Or maybe one brewery with one style. Uh, but it's a lot, yeah. Uh, but what, what's your standard of choosing this amount of beer? Uh, well, basically, uh, it's uh, the, the, the shop. The amount of shelf room that we have. Basically, the shop itself is the storage. So that means that the amount of beers that can be put on the shelf is the amount of beers that we can sell. And then at the end of the season, in October, it's pop beer season. Netherlands and all brewers bring out their pop beer, then we have more. Uh, so they will come to you and uh, to sell the beer? Actually, in April, they approach April. us with lists of how many beers we want to order in October. Ah, okay. I it's, think that's also because they are now very famous, so they are coming to you. Uh, yes, but all the suppliers already know us through the pub as well. The pub has okay. been there for 10 years. And they know that this is another place where they can sell their beers. And if they approach us for the pub, we automatically buy for the shop as well. So even if they don't know about it, because there's more people coming to the shop for a variety than the pub. Okay. So at this moment, what's the most popular style of beer? Uh, well, if you look in the amount, the quantity of yeah, the quantity. bottles that we sell, it's still the Belgium styles, the doubles, Belgium. the triples. Uh, and there's obviously different countries brewing the Belgian styles. Ah, uh, like the US. The, the, the US, yeah. but also the Netherlands. Uh, uh, but uh, as in popular, as in it's cool, that's more the IPAs and the Imperial styles. 
Oh, these two are really important. Right? Uh, yeah, but that. So what's the uh, project? Uh, because this uh, is uh, like actually a Dutch beer store. But you are selling beer from all over the world. So mm -hmm. what's the percentage of Dutch beer and non Dutch beer? Uh, I think it's about 20%. 20% is Dutch. Dutch beer. Yeah. Okay. Which is quite big. Because most of the other beers from all over the world are more established, more people know it and already drink it. And the Dutch craft brewers still have the work to make their ground and get their public buying their beer, so 20% is still quite a lot, and it's dominated by all the beers from the moment, I'm wearing their shirt as well, yeah, it's a really nice brewer, and there's more nice brewers in the Netherlands, but they are famous around the world as well, so already people with different nationalities yeah. coming here and know the Molen, and see the Molen, and we sell quite a lot of them in variety, and that's awesome, so, yeah, next straight. Actually, we, we already have some interview with uh, the Molen. With John Ross. John Ross, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, he's a nice guy. So beer. you just mentioned uh, IPA and uh, the Imperial Stout. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, these two are very popular. Do you have uh, any other idea for other beer sales that are becoming also more popular? Yes, well, there's there's a bigger group uh, trying to drink uh, sour beers. Sour beer. And that's yeah. Frozen, Kriek, and Saison. And it's mainly the uh, beers of spontaneous yeasting yeah. or wild yeast. I mean, lemon is. Uh, yes. Uh, but also saisons or even beers that don't fit into a style. So, generally, from your experience, is there a very big difference when you are selling beer to, to male and to female? On average, I On think average? men are more into. Uh, different styles of beer and discovering okay. new beers, but the uh, amount of women yeah. that want to discover things and are switching to the hoppy side, the bitter side, okay. it's growing rapidly. And I think within a couple of years, the term lady beer is not suitable anymore because oh. there's so many ladies drinking it. But there's also loads of men drinking quite sweet beers. Okay. Of course, I think mostly the beer here is a craft beer. So how can yes. you see, let's see, the, the difference between this kind of craft beer and the more commercial beer? Mm, it's it's a uh, style, so, uh, yeah. the logo, the way the bottles are presented, mm -hmm. uh, the way it reaches us, mm -hmm. because there are very big suppliers mm -hmm. uh, and they supply some brands, but obviously those brands are quite big suppliers, so they need yeah. to brew such amount that they can meet demand. Craft beer brewers, yeah, they brew as much as they can and sell as much as they can, but they start out local and then grow and then they usually need to switch to a different brewing installation. Uh, so the fact that it's not always available, for example, could make it a craft beer. Okay. And then if they move forward, it's always available. I think one of the examples uh, is Brewdog. Brewdog. 2007. Uh, yeah. Michael Jackson, not the artist, but the beer hunter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he advised them, quit your job, start yeah. brewing. And they did. And they had a website with a very grim picture of a bottle yeah, of Stella yeah, Etoile yeah. in the guillotine. Death yeah. to mass beer. And now look at Bruder, all over the world, opening pubs and brew pubs, and they're big. But at the same time, they're still craft beer. Yeah, yeah. But not as craft beer as the latest brewer opening in Rotterdam and brewing 100 liters and trying to gain market and finding his way to customers. It's different, but by style, seriously, craft beer. But of course they have gone so big that I don't know how many employers they have, but they can't just think about their passion for beer. They need okay. to pay bills and they need yeah. to make sure that their employees stay employees and don't lose their jobs. So decisions need to be made commercial as well. But I think still, in their heart, it's passion for beer and it's not passion for money. Where the difference is between craft beer and uh, mass, mass beer or commercial beer. Okay. I just heard uh, Brewdog got a lot of investment this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. As we emerge, it's big yeah, they did a... Uh, uh, Shocks, uh, not shocks, stocks. They brought up stocks. stocks, yeah. Stocks? Yeah, you could buy stocks. Oh, so uh, what do you think is the most 
important factor when you want to open the beer store? What's the most important thing to prepare? Um, you need a good location, location with not okay. too much sunlight. Oh, of course. To preserve the beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need a room for a lot of shelves so you okay. can present a lot of beer because if people can't see it, they won't buy it. Oh, okay. yeah. For, if this would be the only part and the rest would be in stock and we would have a list here, then people okay. would buy this and not the beers on the list. Okay. Unless, unless it's something very specific that they're looking for. Presenting it, the presentation, the way it looks, the, the shop looks, is very important. Uh, you need to have passion for beer. I mean, for the owner of the shops. The, the people that work here as well, because okay. if you're the only person working there, then we're talking about the owner. But uh, if someone comes in here and says, yeah, it could be nice. And how, yeah. many, how many people are working here in this shop? Uh, we have three staff. Three staff. Uh, and then two owners. Two owners and just three staff. Yes, and we're open five days a week. Okay, so as we already know, you have uh, so many kinds of beer. So how do you deal with uh, logistics? Because I think it's a lot of work. Are you buying just uh, from the brewers, breweries, or from some other? You know, no, no, no. Different? Most of it is supplied by suppliers that so are in between the brewer and the shop. Some brewers bring themselves. Mm -hmm. Some beers we pick up ourselves. Okay. Uh, sometimes I make a day through Belgium. Uh, yes. And it's not just to get Belgian beers, but some beers are exported to Belgium okay. quite easily and not to the Netherlands. I don't know why, but that's just the way it goes. It's, it's, okay. it's just maybe just the way the money goes. <laughs> so for me, it's quite easy to go there and pick it up and bring it back here. Okay. Uh, and sometimes, if it's too busy with everything that we do, uh, we uh, rely more on suppliers, but for the shop, I think we have 11 or 12 different suppliers. Suppliers. So these su suppliers will give different beer to you. Mm -hmm. And for some special beer, you need to buy by yourself. You yes. need to read it to the breweries. Okay. Well, that's also, it's, it's great to do that. But to drive down to Belgium to buy two crates of beer mm -hmm. is a lot of fun, but it's inefficient. Uh, inefficient for time, so but sometimes it's worth it. Okay, like West of Cleveland. For example, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the, the yeah it's the best beer in the world according to yeah. Rate Beer. Yeah. Uh, it's most definitely one of the hardest beers to buy. This one is about uh, the age and uh, nationality and the cohesion distribution of the all of the guests. Okay, but the majority is between. 20 and 50, and even the bigger majority probably between 20 and 40, okay. and loads of students, uh, and students? occupation, everybody. Yeah. So do you have uh, any opinion of uh, Chinese beer? Uh, I don't think I ever really had any Chinese beer, uh, but in general, I think that the craft beer scene and then especially with the new styles like IPAs and styles and porters, I have the impression it's not so big in China, but I've never been yeah. there, so it's It's from... not too big, it's just the beginning point, I assume. Uh, but at the same time, I think that if you uh, can get some ground mm -hmm. in the Chinese beer market, mm -hmm. then I think it could be quite well. But people need to discover it. Yeah. But it could be a, a snowball effect that once it starts rolling, it'll expand quite quickly. Uh, but it's also something with revolution and discovering and new. And I think that could be very appealing to uh, uh, loads of people. But at the same time, that might also bring uh, some reluctance with other people that don't like change and revolution. But yeah. I think you should definitely try to get a shop like this somewhere in China, preferably in your hometown. Yeah. <laughs> if you in some big cities in, uh, in China, actually the craft beer is, all, is already very popular and we have the different craft beer. Okay, I think. cool. That's, yeah, I, I didn't know that. So that's where you see, that's my impression from being here in Delft okay. of saying, I yeah, don't think it's very big, yeah. but uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not very big. But uh, of course, we have a, a big market in the future. Yes, a promising market. And I think that more and more people start discovering it. And the nice thing about beer is that it actually combines quite well with food, yeah. quite easily, and that makes it accessible for a lot of people. 
and it, I think it has the same revolution, at least for Europe, that wine had in uh, the 80s. Mm -hmm. And everybody wanted to discover it and learn about it and do workshops and follow courses. Now the same is happening with beer, and beer will conquer the world.